Hi, I'm going to use series and parallel rules for capacitors in order to solve this circuit. And what I mean by solve this circuit, I'm going to calculate the electric potential difference across each of these capacitors, and I'm going to calculate the charge on each of these individual capacitors. So this is a stereotypical capacitor problem. We know the property of the battery that's charged them, and we know the property of each of the individual capacitors, and we hook it all together in this configuration. We should be able to use the laws of physics to calculate the things I mentioned, charge and potential difference for each of them. Okay, so it's, this is hard to solve, complex network of capacitors, so what we do is we simplify this circuit by using the rules for series and parallel for capacitors. So looking at this circuit, uh, capacitor 2 and capacitor 3 are in parallel. So we can simply add the capacitances in order to uh, determine their collective behavior, okay, an equivalent capacitance. So let's just go ahead and do that. So C23, the capacitance of 2 and 3 combined will be 20 plus 25 is 45 microfarads. So what I suggest you do when you calculate an equivalent capacitance, redraw the circuit with your new fictitious capacitor. So leave the battery alone and we have capacitor 1 right here. We left that alone and then we took 2 and 3 and combined them into a single capacitor with this collective behavior and now our circuit looks like this, a little bit simpler. So now I can apply the series rules for series rule for capacitor. They will behave as if they are a single capacitor with a capacitance that is the inverse of the sum of the inverses. So C123 will be 1 over 30 plus 1 over 45 raised to the minus 1. So C123 will be uh, equal to 18 microfarads. Okay, so redraw the circuit. So we have this right here, we got a battery and we've got a capacitor. Okay, so this is pretty manageable. We have one battery, one capacitor, and what, as I mentioned originally, the goal is to solve for the potential difference and the charge of each of those uh, capacitors. So let's solve this one. Okay, so the potential difference across will just be the 1.5 volt. So that's easy. We'll go ahead and write that down though. Uh, potential difference, one, two, three, is simply the battery potential difference. Okay, and then the charge we have to calculate using the definition of capacitance. So definition of capacitance kind of takes the place of, of Ohm's law for capacitors. And if we solve it for charge, we get that it's the capacitance times the potential difference. So throwing in those numbers, I'm using non-SI units here, so you have to be a little bit careful. Uh, but uh, 18 microfarads times 1.5 volts will give us 27 microcoulombs. Okay, so I've solved this, this circuit. I've asserted the potential difference, calculated the charge. So now we take this circuit and work our way back. So when you're solving series and parallel circuits, don't quit here. Typically, you need to work your way back to the original circuit to get a complete solution for each of the circuit elements. Okay, so what these two are in series, so we need to think about how we use the information about the group and apply it to the series. So the charge is the same. The charge of one and the charge of the group two and three will simply be 27 microcoulombs. So we'll just make that as an assertion. So Q1 is equal to 27 microcoulombs. Q23 will also be 27 microcoulombs. We just simply assert that because they are series capacitors, they have to have the same charge. Okay, but they're series, so the potential difference gets split. That 1.5 volts from the battery gets divided between these two. So I have to calculate uh, what that will be. So we'll use this formula but solve for potential difference in order to calculate the uh, in order to, to calculate the potential difference. So delta V1 will be 
charge one over C1. Okay. And so uh, we have a, a charge of 27 microcoulombs and a capacitance of 30 microcoulombs. So it's micro over micro. So I'll get back to SI units, 0.9 volts. Okay. And so then I can do the same thing for two and three. And I have 27 in the numerator. And then the denominator is the group capacitance, uh, 45. And so I get, throw that into my calculator and I get 0.6. Okay, and how I can check that is by uh, this sum needs to add up to the, to the group. So that 1.5 volts got divided. Capacitor 1 got 0.9. Capacitor group 2, 3 got 0.6 volts. Okay, so now I take this information and bring it over to the original circuit. So capacitor 1, I'm done. I know its potential difference is 0.9 volts. I know that its charge is 27 microcoulombs. I've calculated um, everything I've set out to calculate. Okay, but 2 and 3 aren't done. I've got the group behavior. Now I need to look at the individual, what's happening with them. So um, I'm going to assert the potential difference. So these are parallel circuit elements. They have to have the same potential difference. So I'll just say delta V2 equals delta V3, just an assertion, 0.6 volts. Okay, so that comes from this information. Same uh, individual as the group for parallel circuit elements. But I needed to figure out how this charge gets divided between these two, three. The group has 27 microcoulombs, but what about the individuals? So I need to use the formula for definition of capacitance solved for charge like I did earlier in order to calculate the charge. So Q2 will just be C delta V. Okay, so its capacitance is 20 microfarads and the voltage is 0.6, so I get I get uh, 12 micro coulombs. Okay, so it gets 12 of the 27 that the group got, and then Q3 using the same formula, it has a capacitance of 25 and a potential difference of 0.6, and I get an answer of 15 micro coulombs. So that the group that had 27 microcoulombs, it got split between those two individuals, 12 and 15 microcoulombs. Okay, so that's it. I've calculated the potential difference across each of the capacitors. I've calculated the charge of, of each of those capacitors. One other thing you could possibly do is calculate the uh, electric potential energy stored in each of those. That's a pretty straightforward matter, um, but I didn't ask about that, so I'm not going to solve it. Plus, I ran out of room. Okay, so uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.